Welcome to Holly Church. My name is Kevin. I'm the pastor of Holly Church. I'm so glad you're here. Jesus says, John chapter 10, verse 27, my sheep, my followers, hear my voice. And do you have difficulty hearing, listening? Not a physical issue of being able to hear, but actually hearing what someone's trying to communicate to you. And how about someone in your life listening to you? Spouses, kids, coworkers, classmates, family, church family. Do you ever feel like you're not being heard by these people in your life? And what about you listening to Jesus? Do you hear his voice? And what does that mean? I imagine all of us could use some improvement in this area of listening, of hearing, of paying attention to each other, and especially to God, right? Well, how do you listen? Hear God's voice. Are you supposed to hear this booming voice come down out of heaven? Is that how God speaks? Well, listening, hearing each other and God is the focus of this two-week message series, Shema, The Art of Listening. What is Shema? Well, we'll discover that during today's message. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, help us listen, hear from you during this service, of course, but also throughout each moment of our lives. Open our ears to hear from you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome again to Holly Church. To let me know you're here and that you're actively listening, you know, you're acting on what you're hearing, go ahead and open up your connection card page for this week, and you can respond to today's message on your connection card by taking a next step or two for your own personal spiritual growth. New steps are on your connection card page each and every week. You open up your connection card page by clicking on the link in the description. If you're on Facebook or YouTube, if you're at Holly Church Online, just click the tab right below this video. You can send your connection card to me at the end of today's service. And if you're new here at Holly, let us know that on your connection card, or you could text the word, uh, Welcome to 541-507-0066 and follow the prompts. Our fall season of Connect Groups begin the last week of September. Connect Groups consist of 10 to 20 people from our church family who meet once a week in the home of someone from our church family for eight weeks. And you'll pray together, you'll encourage each other, and you'll get to know one another better. And our fall groups will be focusing on discussing more in depth what I'm teaching that week, which is going to be on stuff that really matters. You know, life can be difficult to navigate, but God is always there, available to guide and direct our lives. Now, for more information and to sign up for a connect group, you can go to hollychurch.org slash groups. I'll be right back with today's message after the worship team directs our hearts, directs our minds toward God. So we're better prepared to listen and hear from Him today. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound It covers every part of me My soul is silent, I am bound And it's a beautiful sound It's a beautiful, beautiful sound Amazing grace, how sweet 
you found It covers every part of me My soul is silent I am found And it's a beautiful sound It's a beautiful, beautiful sound Shelter in the storm, hallelujah, you restore my soul. You are healing in the pain, you are shelter in the storm, hallelujah, you restore my soul. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound, I hear you singing over me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound I hear you singing over me I once was lost, but now I'm found And it's beautiful Amazing grace, how sweet the sound It covers every part of me My soul is silent, I am found And it's a beautiful sound It's a beautiful, beautiful sound It's a beautiful, beautiful sound. It's a beautiful, beautiful sound. I've had this thought about a message series about listening for five years now. It's been rolling around in my heart and in my mind over the past five years, but it never really fit into our preaching schedule until this year, and I'm really glad that it did because the Bible has a lot to say about listening, about hearing, and our ability and inability to hear is not just a physical issue that some people have, it's potentially a spiritual spiritual issue that anyone can have. Also, I've been wanting to write these messages because I want to be a good listener, and I'm not always good at being a good listener. How about you? How are you at listening? My wife says I'm not very good at listening uh, to her. Uh, at least I think that's what she said. Full confession, I don't always listen to my wife as well as I should. French playwright Marcel Arkin said, women like silent men, they think they're listening. And someone gave this advice to couples, if you want your spouse to listen and pay strict attention to every word you say, talk in your sleep. The reality is most of us don't listen to others as well as we should. We often half listen or half pay attention. And not only do we far uh, too often uh, half listen or half pay attention to the people around us, we sometimes do the very same thing to God. We half pay attention to the one who loves us most. We half listen to our creator who is always speaking, but we're not always hearing his voice. However, if we flip the coin over, so to speak, we want to be heard we want to be listened to. We want God to fully listen to us, and we want others to fully listen to us, not half pay attention to us, but do we listen to God? And do we listen to others? Do you give your full attention to God and to others listening to them? Jesus says two identifying marks, two identifying characteristics of people who follow him are one, they hear his voice and obey him. In other words, they listen to him. They give their full attention, which means they respond to what Jesus teaches. John chapter 8, verse 47, and chapter 14, verse 21. He who is of God hears the words of God. Those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. So Jesus says, one identifying characteristic of someone who truly follows me is that they listen to me, which means they obey me, which means they love me. A second identifying trait, a second identifying characteristic of those who follow me, Jesus says, is they love fellow believers in me. John chapter 13, 
verses 34 and 35. But I am giving you a new suggestion. No, that's not what it says. Jesus says, I am giving you a new commandment. You must love each other. If the other believer in Jesus doesn't irritate me, no. If they don't do something, if they do so, if they don't do something I don't like, no. You must love each other just as I have loved you. If you love each other, everyone will know that you are my disciples. Disciple means follower. Jesus says this, loving each other makes you distinctive. He says, this is what makes the church distinctive from other things. It sets you apart from how others treat people. Jesus says, love each other like I love you. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 5, love is patient and kind, never jealous, boastful, proud, or rude. Love isn't selfish or quick-tempered. It doesn't keep a record of wrongs that others do. This is the, the love we're to have toward fellow believers. How are you doing? You know, are you patient? Are you not jealous? You know, one aspect of Jesus' love that makes his love for us so unique and so strong is that he loves with an awareness of what we need. He loves with an awareness of what you need, of what others need. And he commands us to love fellow believers in the same way. Be aware of what they need. You must love each other, which means you love with an awareness of what the other person needs. And one thing they need is to be listened to. They need your full attention when they're speaking to you. They need you to hear them and they need you to respond appropriately to what they're saying. This means you have to be actively listening and not just biding your time to jump in and talk yourself. Theologian, uh, that's one who studies God, Paul Tillich says, the first duty of love is to listen. And Christian author and professor Dr. Gary McIntosh says, no single characteristic of a person reveals as much about themselves as their ability to pay attention to others. Now, while almost all of us are born with the ability to physically hear, Proverbs chapter 20, verse 12, the hearing ear and the seeing eye, Yahweh has made both of them. So God creates us with this capacity to hear, but the ability to listen, that must be deliberately cultivated. You must learn and put into practice the art of listening. And if you're a believer in Jesus, it's a necessity if you're going to love other believers. You have to learn. You have to be able to listen. You have to actively listen to them. You have to actually train and discipline yourself to care about what they're saying. Because our, our natural focus is to focus on ourselves. So we have to train and discipline ourselves to care about others. You know, people pay hundreds of dollars to people so they'll listen to them. Why? You know, why do people pay for therapists and counselors? Now, there's more reasons than this, but one reason that people pay money to them is because they want someone to listen to them. Really listen to them. Because when somebody really listens to you, it makes you most likely feel validated, feel important, loved even. Yes, when someone listens to you, you feel loved, you feel important, you feel validated. And Jesus says that's the kind of love we're to express toward fellow believers. They should feel validated. They should feel important. They should feel uh, loved by the way you're listening to them. One of the great things about being is in a connect group is it gives you a place to actively listen to others and for others to actively listen to you as well. You need a place to talk to people and listen to people, and a connect group provides that opportunity. Over the years, I've had people say to me, you know, I, I, I need to talk to you. And sometimes they do need to talk to me, but, you know, 
more often than not, (laughs) they don't need to talk to me. They just need someone to talk to, someone to listen to them. And that's one of the reasons we have connect groups, because you need people to actively listen to you, and you need to be actively listening to others. It's part of loving others, as Jesus commands you to do. And you can find out more about connect groups and sign up for a group online at hollychurch.org groups. So there is an art to listening to others. There's also an art to listening to God, but first, the art of listening to others. So what is listening, actually? Well, listening is a conscious effort to not only hear the words of the other person, but to understand them. So how can you listen to others better? How can you practice this art of listening, develop this art of listening to others in your life? Well, look at the speaker directly, but don't stare. You know, staring just makes it seem creepy. Avoid coming up with a response before the speaker is finished. Try not to be preparing an answer in your mind or what you want to say in your mind while they're talking. Let them finish talking. Someone once gave this tongue-in-cheek definition for a conversation. A vocal competition in which the one who is catching his breath is called the listener. (laughs) That's the opposite of the art of listening. You want to avoid coming up with a response before the speaker is finished. Mentally, block out others. This means when you're listening to someone, you're focused on them. They don't uh, feel like you're just waiting to talk to someone more important. Have you ever had that happen to you? I, I've, I've had it happen to me. I've been in conversations with people, and then someone comes along that the person talking to me feels is more important to me, and they just, boom, they're done with me. You know, And that certainly doesn't make me feel validated, important, or loved. So this skill of mentally blocking out everyone else and focusing on the one who's speaking to you in the moment. It was a skill. Now, no matter what you you think about the man, don't get sidetracked into that, please. (laughs) But this ability to mentally focus and block at others and, and just focus in on the person who's speaking to you in the moment, President, former President Bill Clinton has that ability. He had the ability to mentally block, even in huge groups, to mentally block out and really make the person that he was speaking to feel like they were just the the center and the focus of his full attention, even if it was for a brief few seconds. It's a skill we all need to develop in our lives, mentally blocking out others, focusing on the one who's speaking to us. Listen to the speaker's body language. People communicate with, fa- I do it all the time, facial, my, my hands here. People communicate with their facial uh, expressions, their body movement all the time. For example, if someone keeps moving back from you, uh, <laughs> you're too close to them. Uh, when people do this to me, uh, I, I honestly, I'm not fully focusing on what they're saying because I'm just, I, you're too close to me. You're kind of freaking me out, you know? So, uh, be aware of people's body language. You know, if someone's backing away from you, realize, oh, hey, I'm too close to them. Uh, let, me, let me stay back a little bit so they'll fully listen to me. Avoid si- side conversations in a group setting. I know sometimes this is hard to do, but, you know, practice it. You know, you're focusing on listening to one person at a time. Not occasionally, not like you're falling asleep, like you're saying, hey, yeah, keep talking. Smile and Use other positive facial expressions. Smiling goes a long ways toward people feeling like, hey, I'm being listened to. I'm being being validated. I I feel important to this person because they're smiling at me. Uh, Make sure your posture is open and inviting. When people come to an in-person service, sometimes I can tell uh, that who doesn't want to be there just by the way they're saying, you know, arms folded and they're leaning back in the chair. And it's like, maybe they want to be uh, listening to me. I don't know. But when you're like that, people feel like you're closed off. So try to set, you know, open posture and a, a welcoming posture as they're speaking to you. Encourage the speaker to continue with small verbal cues like yes and uh-huh, Uh, A few more things that you can be aware of 
with this art of listening, this uh, showing someone you love them by listening to them, uh, paraphrasing. So you're saying that uh, is a great way to compliment the speaker and to clarify what they've said. So you're saying that you really enjoyed your trip to the Grand Canyon, paraphrasing. Asking a question, what do you mean when you say, or is this what you mean? Summarizing, it was good talking with you about the Grand Canyon, whatever it is. Think about what impact this would have on people who don't follow Jesus if believers in Jesus were really doing this, actually listening to each other. And so I hope you'll deliberately choose to practice being a better listener. It's not easy. You have to stick with it. You have to practice it. You you have all these bad habits when it comes to listening that you have to replace with good habits. So you have to, what you have to do is you have to practice these good habits until they become your go-to response. So you're really actively listening to others. Once a good habit forms, you'll just naturally listen to others better. Theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer said, the first service one owes to others in the fellowship. That word fellowship, he's talking about the church, your local church family. Consists of listening to them. Just as love of God begins in listening to his word, so the beginning of love for the brethren he uses the word brethren, brother, brothers to describe uh, other people in the church, the church family, is listening to them. Oh, excuse me, is learning to listen to them. It's God's love for us that he not only gives us his word, but lends us his ear. So it is his work that we do for our brother when we learn to listen to him. You're participating in God's work when you listen to others in the church. There's an art to listening to to others, and there's an art to listening to God. So the art of listening to God. We're instructed to listen to God all throughout the Bible. For example, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 and 5. Listen, Israel, Yahweh our God, Yahweh is one, love God. Yahweh your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Now, most of the Old Testament books, those are the books written before Jesus' birth, the book of Genesis to the book of Malachi. Most of them, well, none of them, (laughs) were originally written in English. And most of them were originally written in the Hebrew language. And the Hebrew word for listen, that word listen there, or here is shema. Shema is the Hebrew word for listen or hear. And it's a common Hebrew word used by writers of the Bible very often because hearing, unless one is deaf, is a universal activity. Proverbs 20, verse 12. I read it er earlier. The hearing, uh, the Shema. The hearing ear and the seeing eye, Yahweh has made both of them. So the most basic meaning of this Hebrew word is sound waves traveling into our ear canals. But the art of listening to God goes beyond physical listening to spiritual listening. There is an art to listening to God. It's listening to God with your entire being with your body, listening to him with your body, with your soul, with your spirit. We just read it. Love Yahweh your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. That is, pay attention to him, listen to him. So when it comes to the art of listening to God, Shema means to pay attention to or focus on. And next week's message will focus on the art of listening to God. How can you better hear his voice in your life? Now, today we focused on how to listen to other people better, the art of listening to other people. And we discover Jesus tells us to love other Christians, and that means being aware of 
what others need. And the first duty of love is we are to actively, fully listen to other believers. Why? Because it makes them feel validated. It makes them feel important. It makes them know and feel loved. The Apostle Paul, echoing Jesus' teaching about how we're to love one another in the church, instructs us, Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 8, if then there's any encouragement in Christ, if any consolation of love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by thinking the same way, having the same love, sharing the same feelings, focusing on one goal, Do nothing out of rivalry or conceit, but in humility consider others as more important than yourselves. And a part of that humility is listening to others. Everyone should look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Make your own attitude that of Christ Jesus, who existing in the form of God, did not consider equality with God as something to be used for his own advantage. Instead, he emptied himself by assuming the form of a slave, taking on the likeness of men. And when he had come as a man in his external form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even to death on a cross. Unselfish love, like Jesus has toward us, is the type of concern that we're to have for other believers. Caring enough to listen. I want to personally thank you for giving to Holly Church, to the Lord's work as we build and promote his kingdom here on earth. There are several different options, ways to give to Holly Church. They're all on your screen right now. Every dollar given helps make a difference for Jesus. Next week, we will talk about the art of listening to God, how we listen to him and what that means to listen to him. Until then, have a great week. I'll see you next week. May God keep and bless those who are his.